Welcome to Mind Pump. We are the top fitness, health, entertainment podcast in the world. Your mom loves us. Uh, this is a Q&A episode. We call it Qua. This is where we answer people's fitness and health questions. But the way we open the episode is by talking about current events. We catch up with each other. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. I'm going to give you the breakdown of what went down in today's Mind Pump podcast. So we opened up by talking about government stupidity. Uh, they're, they're shutting down bus lines over here in San Jose, only going to make other buses more crowded with uh, more people potentially getting more people sick. Not surprising. You idiots. Also, uh, in a recent episode, we totally fell for an April Fool's joke from Quest. They said they were making a high-protein <laughs> seltzer, you know, yes. hard water or whatever. Apparently alcohol. that's fake news. Thanks, Adam. Totally fooled Adam. And then, of course, because we trust them, we fell for it as well. Thanks again, buddy. Uh, then we talked about the howling people at night. Apparently this is spreading like crazy. Ho, ho, ho! I get, uh, Justin's saying that at 8 o'clock at night, people are howling out their window to yeah. show the support for first responders and the people on the front line. So let's get all the pump heads doing it. Yeah, yeah let's let's all howl at night, I guess, at 8 p.m. That's kind of cool. Howl the moon. Then we talked about 24 Hour Fitness getting sued. You know, they weren't canceling people's memberships, even though they were shut down, and now they may be paying the price. Uh, I talked about the increase in processed food consumption. Uh, it's over 25% increase. Around. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. People want to buy things with long shelf life, and let's be honest, when you mm -hmm. want to be comforted, does anything better than a bag of chips? Mm -hmm. no, not really. Uh, then we talked about our company uh, that we work with, Organifi. Um, now, we're not talking about how awesome their supplements are. Uh, we actually talked about how awesome they are, but they are. with their charity. Um, yes. They've been sending care packages to healthcare workers uh, with their green juice and their gold juice and their Pure and other products. Now, Organifi makes some of the best organic supplements out there, protein powders, and like I said earlier, Green juice, gold juice is a red juice that's great for, you know, before you work out with no caffeine. Uh, it's stimulant-free. Um, we have a discount for you because you're a Mind Pump listener. Make sure you go check them out. It's Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump, and you'll get 20% off with the code Mind Pump. Then we talked about a local business, Red Dot Fitness here in San Jose, that is doing- Shout out to Scott. They are doing COVID-19 antibody tests, FDA-approved antibody tests. So that's awesome uh, that they're doing that. And we can't wait for more companies to be doing this because it'd be great to know how many people have had this infection and uh, have healed from it. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about dogs and groceries. Apparently, they're starting to deliver some groceries for us. Dogs are the best. They're, they're, they're the best. They're always there he for us. You can't beat dogs. I mentioned how Jeff Bezos donated $100 million to food banks. That's really, really cool. We talked about Bernie Sanders dropping out of the presidential race. Oh, that sucks. No more socialism. Yeah. What are we going to do? Wah, wah. Yeah. Then we talked about a company that we work with, PRX. PRX makes the best at-home workout equipment. Now, they're most known for their squat racks that fold into the wall. Um, they're amazing. Low profile, very sturdy, high quality squat racks. But they also have bars, plates, dumbbells. I mean, they have a lot of home gym equipment. Right now, gyms are closed. So their sales are going through the roof. Uh, we recommend you go check them out if you're looking for at home uh, weights and gym equipment. Um, if you want to get the Mind Pump hookup, go to prxperformance.com forward slash Mind Pump. And then we talked about Adam's cherub face in his fifth grade photo <laughs> when he was a little kid. He was so cute. So, so cute. With his gangly teeth. Then uh, we got into answering the fitness questions. The first question is, uh, is there a rule of thumb one should go by when they're writing and creating their own workout programming? The next question, this person wants to know how quickly you lose muscle mass when you can't lift heavy, when you're stuck at home and you only have 10, 20-pound dumbbells, bands, and your body weight. Next question, this person is asking a specific question about MAPS Anywhere. They're following our at-home workout program that requires very little equipment. They're finished with the four-week program, and they want to know how to progress. So we give advice. If you have MAPS Anywhere, we're kinda, we talk about how to continue progressing with the program if you still can't go to the gym. But there's also advice in there for people who uh, don't follow MAPS Anywhere. Like, How do you continue progressing with your program? How are ways you can modify it? So that your body continues to get stronger, build more muscle, build have more mobility. Uh, in other words, just get better. And the the final question: This person wants to know what accessory exercises and movements can really help with increasing 
deadlift weight, getting the weight of their deadlift to go up. Let's accessorize. Also, this month, uh, two of our most popular correctional exercise programs, MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro, are both 50% off. Now, first off, both of these programs require zero equipment. Okay, You need no equipment to do these whatsoever, just your body. Uh, but let me tell you the difference between the two programs. MAPS Prime, there's a self-assessment tool within the program. Follow that, and that will direct you and tell you what you need to do to prime your body for your workouts. It's like a flow chart to success. So what you know? What's priming? Well, priming is a, it's like a warm up, but much more individualized. Proper priming gets you more connected to your muscles, improves your range of motion, and makes your current workout far more effective. Really, really good trainers do this with their clients. This is what we do with our clients, and it really makes a huge difference in terms of your progress and results. Now, MAPS Prime Pro, that's purely correctional. So with MAPS Prime Pro, you go in there and you work on specific areas of your body that you need better connection, mobility, uh, work on. Let's say you have shoulders that tend to bother you. Go in MAPS Prime Pro, take the shoulder uh, mobility tests. That'll help you pick what mobility movements and what correctional exercise movements you could do for your shoulders. But it also goes with your back. It works on your hips. Your ankles, your hands, your, your wrists, neck, neck. Uh, it works on the whole body. So again, both those programs, 50% off, no equipment required. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code PRIME50. That's P-R-I-M-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. You got your taxi medallion, Uber comes out. Oh, ah! uh, yeah. Fuck. That was cheat money. That did do that. Bro, imagine if you just got your medallion and and that and Uber rolls. Do you know out. how much they were selling for? Yeah, like a, it's like a million, right? They were. Well, you, you had to have parking lots right now. Like they're opening that up, right? It's, it was a million, right? I think so. You had to have a million liquid to do it, just like McDonald's. It's like Bro, a, the medallions were so expensive, but the, 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 and they were hard to come. The by. value of when of them went from like a million bucks each to, to like a hundred grand. You couldn't sell them. Yeah, they got they nobody would, wanted to buy them. I think because they, of Uber. I think they dropped like like literally from a million to like a hundred grand. Who the hell's buying a, a a taxi medallion? The whole reason why it was expensive in the first place was it was super regulated. Now so has you it, only had so many. Now has it completely uh, has uh, Uber overran everywhere yet? I know there were still states that were trying to legislate and and keep it from coming in, and I know there was they went back and forth like in New York, back and forth in Texas. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Do you know? Is is yeah? Uber, there's still there's states and, and is there. Still, Pocket still the yeah. cities that say no, but I, it's it, you know I like I, what's that term I say? It's like putting the toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah, it's out. Yeah. You know? I, know, I know that there's. Remember, we've been places where we've flown like air, certain airports. You know, they make like the the Uber and Lyfts, like the redhead stepchild. I they know. have to go somewhere oh, else. Yeah. Like yeah. the taxis get still get the because they have they have you know contracts. partnerships. Yeah. yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. But you know, good luck. Government, right? Yeah, you gotta Speaking love that. Of that. You came in uh, so this mad. morning, like so uh, all like with the, your panties yeah, in a ruffle. Some fire, so angry. Yeah, what got yeah. your pants in your pants? pants. In here's a bunch. the so here's the problem. The big problem with uh, central planning is it's super short sighted. And um, a lot of what they pass is like feel good laws or laws that that sound like they should <laughs> be helpful. It all, isn't it always? So that I'll way, give though? you an example. Okay, yeah. New York City uh, is uh, like they would call the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic in the U.S. They have the most cases. It's you know by far right. I think they're like at a hundred and something thousand cases, and the next highest is like in the tens of thousands. Right. right. So what does New York do? They shut down certain subway lines and bus lines, okay? Because they're short-sighted. Here's what politicians right. are thinking. We need to shut some of these down because we got to prevent people from whatever. Because they're highly trafficked. Yeah. yeah. Here's what ended up happening. Everybody, yeah, everybody, go, everybody goes, goes those, to those one uh, places that are open. That's right. Because people still need to move and travel. Yeah. And those buses and, and subways that were remained open, far more packed than ever before. People are posting <laughs> pictures of how they're they're wearing masks and gloves and they're standing next to each other and they're like, this is the only train so I, I could take. When things like this That's happen... So dumb. Stupid. Right, okay, I, I feel like though there's got to be more to the story when things like that... There can't... I mean, and I know people are going, no, government can be that stupid, but there's got to be... To get to that level, you have to have a certain level of education, experience, and knowledge, right? To get to that level to where you can help pass laws... <laughs> And there's and it takes a team of people. It's not just one person gets to pass a law, right? We have to just go through all kinds of legislation in order for that to happen. So you mean to tell me that nobody raised an, a hand and said, "Hey, you know, if we close this down, this might happen." Right? Like nobody? Like really? If it if it that doesn't make sense to me. Well, if it sounds good, 
um, and, and it's an emergency. You want your your voters to see that you're doing something, right. and they're just passing things very quickly. Really right though, now, really though, dude, are you kidding me? Yeah. They always the laws are constantly being passed that achieve the opposite result constantly because they sound good. See, I, I I have more of a I don't know like I don't, San, San I, don't, I don't know if this this I have more of a like corruption mindset. Like I think that somebody's brother you know, owns that fucking bus line. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That So they 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 knew that shit was going to happen like that and somebody benefited from it. Well, that's all, how, I think the, I don't think, I, I don't they're think. They're all owned by the state. So uh, well, I, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm just saying that as an example. Yeah. Like, I don't really think that somebody's brother fucking owns the bus line. I get that. But my point is that somebody is benefiting from it. I just don't see it being that, you everyone being so naive that you don't know that's going to happen. Sometimes the benefit is you look like you're doing something. Yeah. So now, okay. now, okay, yeah, okay that's a fair just point. Acting, yeah, like oh, our our mayor, you know, he did this, you know, he took all this action. So the reason why I was so pissed off is because we, you know, I come in here, and there's a sign because there's a there's a you know transit uh, bus stop right outside of our our facility, mm -hmm. and there's a sign there. Due to COVID nineteen, we are going to be discontinuing uh, certain bus routes and lines, and we're only going to keep certain ones open. Exact same thing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Those buses are going to be packed, and it's just going to spread more shit. What they should do, if you want to be smart, what you should do, you know, okay, of course they're saying essential workers, all that stuff. Keep that the same. Have way more. Have way more buses come by so that well, you know, instead of having 15, you okay, know. Okay, so I'm going to challenge that though. So you, you have to understand that there, everybody is is in a uh, economical pinch right now too. Sure. So the, the buses that aren't getting people that are, have three people on them, which is you're seeing this right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, that are running, the, the, they're losing money on the gas and the person, that the, the bus driver to drive those. So they also have to think if we're going to keep this going, that we have to figure something out there too. So it's not just the safety of the community and what's smart with that. It's also after thinking about how do we keep operating without having to completely shut down because we can't afford to d run all this. Well, I get what you're saying. And I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm just saying that makes more sense than discontinuing a bunch of bus lines for the reason of virus well, and, and make it, it spread faster. What does it though? I Absolutely. mean, do, does it? I mean, that if, when you're talking about just COVID, but when you talk about that, it, it, if you kept operating the way you're operating with this many bus lines, this many people being staffed and lose bleeding money every single day, you could potentially cripple the whole entire thing. Well, again, maybe, but my point is if the reason is for COVID to keep people safe, then you're doing it wrong if well, that's the reason. I, 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 I just yeah. think there's. But I'll, I'll look. I'll give you an example of uh, <laughs> another great example. So because of the ways that the regulations are being done with the airline industry, uh, airlines are flying empty planes in order to maintain keep their spots in order to keep their to get their government money. Oh yeah, as I so, say, they yeah. they know they're getting a bailout, so they don't give a shit. Uh, okay, run so, the credit card up, you know? right? So I, I don't think it's a money saving. Uh, I don't think they're thinking to themselves, "This is how we're going to save money." Well, are buses getting bailouts mm. the same way planes are? Uh, if not, then yeah, uh, sure it does make sense. Yeah, I, I don't, wonder about that. No, I don't. I think that they're so if they're not getting a bailout, just like planes are. See, planes it makes sense because planes are. They know they got a fucking. They have the mm. golden ticket. They are know. Light, yeah, are light rails and trains and everything still operating? Uh, I I don't know how many of them are closing. I don't yeah. know how many of them are shutting down. I just think it's. Again, I mean, I, I know I know companies that know that they they are going to qualify for like the loan for all their employees, and they're operating negatively right now because they know they can run it on a credit card, or they know exactly. that they're going to get relief. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then you have other people that are maybe small business owners that aren't sure if they're going to get relief or not, and they're having to make different yeah. pivots. So it's mm -hmm. I guess well, look, I'll give you another uh, another great example, right? So San Jose, uh, they tried to pass an ordinance that said that uh, that uh, land land own landlords would could uh would not be charging rent for like a month or two so they were going to pass this thing that said everybody doesn't have to pay rent for a month or two which this happened in washington it right? did and it, now here's why that's stupid i'll tell you why that's stupid sure some people are going to be helped but i know lots of people who could afford to pay rent don't have issues won't also pay it also kicks the can down the road because the land the landlord has to pay their mortgage and their rent uh, they have their bills to pay, so it just goes up and up and up, and eventually the taxpayers are going to pay for it. Anyway, a smarter approach would be this. You own property. If your person can't pay you rent, and you deal with it yourself, you talk to your, your tenants yourself. If they can't pay you, then we'll give you a tax break because it's your money anyway. 
You know, taxes are your money anyway. No, I like yeah. that. That makes a lot of sense to me. But the, uh, even though you kick the can all the way up, don't you just relieve the banks at the end? I mean, that's because that's another... And who relieves the banks? Yeah, of course. Mm. We, <laughs> yes. we do indirectly, right? <laughs> so On I another know. note, uh, we got the uh, gray memo today. What? We're all, uh, we're all wearing oh, gray. I was like, oh, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a curveball right there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, man, uh, we're, we're uniformed out today. It just, goes, looks, to sh- just goes to show that we're all connected. Yeah, yeah. Hi- the, hive mind. By the yeah. penis. Yeah. I, um, uh, I did want to ask you something, Adam. Hmm. When you bring up topics on the show, oh god, do you get the fuck out of check? here with this? Listen, to you- me. <laughs> listen here, listen, Linda, listen. Do you check? All to right. Make sure that well, Bert- I mean, we all bought in on this. Yeah. Too, first, so. of, first of all, we all got bamboozled. Listen, yeah, listen first time. of all, kudos to Quest for brilliant advertising. You got me to talk about it in more than one space. Probably, so I don't know how many just because of my mouth. Dude, uh, April Fool's things are so dumb. Yeah. Hey, listen though. You know what though? Kuda, I love, I love brilliant advertising. So here I'm going to go from talking shit about Quest. I'm going to flip it right around and I'm going to change my story and yeah. say, brilliant company. You got someone like me, some asshole to. Re- they sent me an email, bro. It wasn't like I was like Google searching and I. Like, oh, really? I thought they, you read that on no, some article. No, I'm, I'm on their email list, so I, I watch the emails that they send out anyway. Like, like, oh, high protein alcohol. And they sent a email. <laughs> to me it wasn't yeah. like uh so you want to know what's funny what so it was believable when when we were talking about it on it the is podca- believable so when we're when we're talking about on the podcast so the listeners might not know this is that uh doug will oftentimes pull up an article about what we're talking about or show us a picture so we have something to reference the article that doug pulled up with the picture was an article that said it was an april fool's joke we still didn't we still didn't pay attention he did yes did you know that I, no, actually, I didn't even see that. Yeah, so, so are you sure? That's yeah, that's. So, I don't think he it did say that. though. So oh, it not, did. You look did. back and oh, how funny yeah, is that? So it's we not just your fault. We just steamrolled Doug's them. fault too. Yeah. You know what though? <laughs> Sorry. I I love I love 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 creative marketing, I and know. that's creative yeah, right there. Really cool. Very very creative because it's the same reason why we were talking shit about it. They, I'm sure they even laughed about the idea and said, you know what, some people are going to believe yeah. this. And it was believable. And you, they're not the only, someone. Someone sent me. I think the person who actually sent me the DM. Bang's already trying to make it happen as yes, he speaks. So. I was going to say yeah. some companies. Yeah, it's not have, a joke. Yeah, yeah. some companies <laughs> have actually it. done it. So or tried to do it in the past. Someone told me. Uh, but I just that was great. And I got hat, dude. I hooked, all of us got hooked, bamboozled. Line and sinker. They got me. And kudos to them. Well, for, the re- the main reason it was why dumb enough to be believable. It, it, well, that's it. The, the reason why I, f- I I think I totally fell for it is because it's not. Out of the realm of, you know, potential reality. Yeah. Well, they they got me because they went to my email. If I found some, whenever I find anything that's like just like sent to me or you know Googled like that, I just came across. Mm-hmm. I don't normally go to Snopes, right? Especially if it's crazy, like like where I was like that's stupid. Yeah, I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like Snopes is like the next place I go right afterward just to double check. I'm not going to talk about something stupid because they got me in my email. I just didn't question it. Yeah. I just, oh, okay, this is real. They're marketing to me right now. <laughs> you know what's funny? I wonder how it many- sucks being had, though. I wonder how many people listening to the podcast heard us talking shit, and they were thinking like, oh, that's cool. I know. And they yeah, went to the website. For sure. Ooh, I want to order some. I'm going to buy some. Well, that's just it. You know, that I mean, I would love to hear from Quest. Maybe we have somebody who's listening that works for them. I would love to hear what the internet traffic was uh, after that, that whole April Fool's joke, because if, mm. you know, obviously, if it- Got everybody to head over there. It was. It probably drove a shit ton of websites. Oh, did you guys visits. do some howling? Uh, I did. Eight o'clock. Did you? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Why didn't you text us last night? Oh, I should have reminded you guys. Yeah. No, my my kids and I all we opened the window and like we were listening and it got louder. Like pe- more people are contributing. I guess there's going to be a whole write up about it. Uh, you know, for our area, I guess it's 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 in a lot more places. New York, I think, is another place they're wow. doing it. In your Rednet magazine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and people even people have been DMing me about it too. Like, I guess it's for uh, they're they're shouting out to like first responders and people out there like still trying to like uh, you know, active people like trying yeah. to help. Yeah. Um, and so it's like kind of like a shout out to them or whatever. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I just thought it was a bunch of fucking no. This people is howling. this is happening all over. I've actually read a bunch of articles. And Seen and like some people, people are going out at certain times of day and they're just applauding, you know. And, oh, that's and, that, cool. that too, applauding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 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 seeing this all over, which is really cool, man. That, again, yeah, it, it just awesome. it, it speaks to what uh, you know I was talking about the other day that I'm seeing now. That's just really cool. It's really cool to see. You know, everybody come together. You know, somebody rained on my parade uh, after I said that on the last podcast and DM me. They said, you know, Adam, if you remember, this is how we all were right after 9-11. And then it wasn't very long until we all went back to being assholes again. So well, we, got, yeah. we just got to reminded. Yeah. You just got to get reminded, dude. It's, right. you, you fall into a pattern. 
you get spoiled. Uh, things become easy. You start to forget to be grateful for certain things. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while, some shit happens. And, you know, that's it. Speaking it's of news, Justin. Oh, okay. 24-hour fitness getting sued. Oh, see? Woo! Class action lawsuit coming their way. Yay. For chart. They have over 4 million members. That they are billing, they were billing still. What bad and I, decision? And I'm telling know, right? you right now, it's it fucking smells like smells fishy to me because when I went on there to cancel, because we talked about this the first time, uh, I think it was a GM or a DM who works for the company who also listens to our show reached out to me and said, Adam, we're handling it. Here's a link to cancel your membership. I was like, oh, thanks, bro. Click on the link to go cancel my membership. <laughs> ask for my birthday and ask for my phone number. I put those two things in, which by the way, okay. My birthday's never changed. My phone number has been the same since I was 17 years old. I've been one of those people yeah. who have had the same cell phone number since cell phones came out. Four so, eight, error. Five, 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 five. <laughs> error. Yeah. 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 And it says error and that it, I, it's not right. And so, and then it says that I have to like Shenanigans. send this long email to someone else and go somewhere else. And then it just, it made it a pain in the ass to do it. I'm like, you know what? Well, bad I can't, behavior, man. It's going to catch up to you. Look at that. Oh, class action wow. lawsuit. They're going to be coming. on sale again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many times have they, they changed heads? <laughs> Holy it's, cow. Wow. It's sad to see because, uh, you know, I, I started at, at 24 Hour Fitness, I think in 1997. And this was shortly after 24, so it used to be called 24 Hour Nautilus. And they, they worked, they had merged or bought uh, family fitness centers, which was another chain, mainly in Southern California. And they became 24 Hour Fitness. And they were the leaders. They weren't just the leaders in, uh, you know, locations and in, you know, production. But they led the gym space. They were the ones that that really led the gym space and EFT. So now, now everybody's membership gets charged automatically. Twenty Four Hour Fitness was one of the first companies. They weren't the first, but they were one of the first to adopt it and then make it widespread. Which, by the way, revolutionized. The gym industry, it completely, it made it profitable before you, that was very mean, difficult. What do you mean they weren't the first? They were the first. They, I don't think they were the first to do EFT. Yes. No, they were one of the, one of the first. Oh, I don't know anybody that was doing it before. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were, they were, there were gyms that were messing with it, but they were one of the, oh, okay. the first, but they were the one to for really- For sure, I was going to say, for sure the first the like big it. company yeah. to actually That's roll it. it out and keep And it, it made gyms profitable. That was like such a, a turning point. They also, I mean, when I was there- the people I worked with were talented. So much talent. Talented. Like, Every one of the guys that were friends of mine that worked, that made it like obviously a, a job like that, there's a high turnover rate too, right? Like yeah. you, you'd see some people come in. Like I'm not counting those people. But right? all the good general if managers, you, fitness yes, managers. If you made it, if you made it into a leadership role in that company in, in, in any fashion, even if you weren't a like a head of the gym, even if you were just an assistant, if you were there for a couple of years and made it into leadership, you were all and you're not there anymore. All those successful, all successful, all of them, all of them make north of six figures, great jobs, great careers. I learned great. so much in that environment because of the people I worked under and worked for. And of course, it starts at the top. Mark, Mark Masteroff was the guy that started it, and he's just the guy. Yeah. Anybody you ever talk to who's worked with the guy will tell you what an amazing uh, leader he is. Um, so it's sad. It's sad yeah. to see 24 Fitness, you know, they, 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 they were, they've, it's been a long road. They've been kind of going down this. This road for They've a long been spiraling time. Spiraling a bit. Yeah, and so now to see this, it's like, oh, it's so sad so that, that that company, you know, went in that direction. Anyway, so uh, processed food consumption, it's up over twenty three percent right of now. Of course, yeah, that's not yeah. surprising yeah. to me. Though. Well, you Lots know, of pop tarts floating around. It, it's not just that. So I think one of the main reasons why it's going up. Number one, people want to eat comfort food a little bit more, but also I think it's just because the shelf life is high. And mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys. I used to go grocery shopping. Almost every day. I'm one of those kind of people. I like to go for what I need for the day. Yeah. Get my, if I need some steak, if I need whatever, I'll get it. Fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. I like to do that. Um, but now it's such an ordeal because you show up, probably a line, sanitized, six feet, one direction, whatever. It's just a long, you take your stuff back, sanitize everything or whatever, that I go now once, I try to go once a week or less and so I'm more likely to buy processed foods because they last, you know, canned foods or whatever. They last yeah. a long time. But I'll say this, if, if, you, if you're if you like I am and you're getting more of this food, there are better processed food choices. You can get, you know, choices that are a little bit better than the, you know, the typical garbage or whatever. Speaking of companies, speaking of, of good leadership and processed foods, all these things, this reminded me of a DM that I got yesterday and I have to read it. Uh, because I didn't know about this. This person actually thought we were aware. 
and I wasn't aware of this, it, it prompted me actually to uh, text message uh, Drew Canoli afterwards and just to tell him uh, I think he's doing a hell of a job. And this is what I got. So this DM I got says, hey, Mind Pump crew. It was actually, I think, believe all of you yeah, saw we all this. Got it. Yeah. Hey, Mind Pump crew, just wanted to let you guys know real quick about a little promotion Organifi is doing. I'm sure you are aware already, which we are not. However, they are sending care packages to frontline healthcare workers through this COVID ordeal. I'm a medical laboratory scientist working in transfusion medicine in Chicago, Illinois. They ended up sending me over 90 single serve packets of gold juice, green juice, and pure, all for free. This absolutely just sold me on the Organifi as a company. Absolutely incredible of them to do something like this. And good on you guys for working with such an amazing company. Keep up the great work and keep the amazing content going. Been a huge fan for a few years now. Take care, killers. So great. I thought that was yeah. so rad. I think that's so great. That's just, Perfect move on that. And, and it's what I even the fact that we advertise for them and they this was because we okay so for the listener like part of like uh, the way things operate here there's somebody who manages all of our partnerships uh rachel's in direct contact every single week with our partners they give her feedback of how things are working they tell her upcoming promotions or things that they want us to, to talk about if they got something going on the company and this actually didn't even make it to us so I didn't even know they are doing that. And why I, I think that's great is it's, it's a charitable thing that they're doing. And it's not like, like so, you know, uh, what I don't like is the, you know, the virtue signaling, the yeah. look, look at me, what I'm yeah, do Donate $50,000 and spend a million dollars letting everybody know. Exa ex exactly. <laughs> that's classic. And so, uh, you know, and this person actually thought we, we actually did not know this. I really didn't have any idea. This is a message from a listener. Yeah. yeah. And we're, and we're in, and we're in contact on a very regular basis. And we, we ask for these things so we can share and talk about them because I think they're good things to share. But I just thought that uh, just speaks uh, so highly of the, the the integrity that the company has for them to do something like mm -hmm. that, and then to not be right away like let's go because we're the, we're their number one pot of all the companies that they advertise with. Uh, Mind Pump does the best with Organifi. So if there if anything's going to come down the pipe as far as talk about something about Organifi, it's going to come to us. And the fact that they're doing something charitable like this, and it wasn't like the first thing that they did was to reach out and tell us that. I just, I think that's amazing. I, I do, think, yeah. I do too. And I think that the people who are working right now, who are ex exposing themselves more um, than than the rest of us, who are you know stick, stuck at home, people who work, of course, in health and, and medical you know facilities, people who police, fire. Um, you work at a grocery store, a gas station, these essential businesses. When you go to these places. Tell them, thank you for working. I really want these people to feel our gratitude because they're out there and they're they're risking themselves. You know, the rest of us are, are self-quarantining. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm having no contact with anybody. You work in the grocery store, you've got customers coming in. You're some kid that, you know, go, get, go gets the carts in the parking lot mm -hmm. or, you know, you have a... Uh, so I, I do, every once in a while, we still do takeout. We'll go to a restaurant, grab the food, bring it home and eat, or we'll do DoorDash. I'm giving these people big tips. I'm yeah. thanking them for working. There's one place that uh, Jessica and I go to um, in this in the area, Isabella's. They, they do Peruvian food, um, which uh, you know Jessica introduced me to. Really, really good. Small you know, family restaurant or whatever. And I make sure to go there once a week right now. I like their food, but really I want to support them. I don't want to say thank you for you know, still working and you know, being out here. I think it's... I, I think, it's uh, it's something that these people need to know, and you know what happens when you thank them, man. It, it, you can see the look on their face; they really appreciate it. Well, again, along the long, along the lines of you know more great companies and doing cool stuff, our friends right down the road, Red Dot Fitness. Oh, so brilliant, so good. It, Scott sends a text message uh, over to me last night, and you know he says, "I, I want to open this up to our friends and family first before we talk about it <clears throat> publicly." And of course, I got approval to him to, to bring it up today. Uh, cause we already booked ours and they are doing COVID-19, uh, antibody testing. So, so awesome. And I just, I think that's, I, I know that I, we talked back and forth for a while. It was a ton of work to even get the approval to do this and, and, and to make it happen. Um, I right away. And I told him too. And again, this is a situation where, I mean, he offered to do it for us for free because of all the support and things that we've done for them. I said, absolutely not. I said, every one of us want to pay. I sent them over a list of my family and friends that all think that they may have had it already or that were in contact with me around the time that I thought I had it uh, and Sal and all everybody that works here. So we instantly booked right away. And then I posted on my story 
uh, and I already see it. it's almost booked already out. It's flying. Right I, now. I think it's so because they you now one of the reasons why they have this opportunity is they were working with a laboratory to begin with because they so Red Dot uh, Fitness is a uh, facility that's down the street from us. And they uh, offer fitness services. So they have personal trainers in there. It's a really nice, well-equipped facility. In fact, in some of our YouTube videos, uh, we film them in this facility. Mm -hmm. But they also do other types of health testing, uh, blood tests, hormone tests. And they have actual phlebotomists. And you know, they work with an actual laboratory. So when this all started going down, he contacted the laboratory. And they really pushed hard to create a test that tested for antibodies and then get FDA approval for because these, these are real FDA approved tests. It's a real laboratory, right, right. and they were luckily able to uh, to get them. And I think this is just, I think yeah. it's a great service. I think it's a great service. We need it, and you know, I, I, I it's great I, for the community. I was telling some some family members and friends, and a lot of them were like, well, I thought that you know there was a shortage of tests, and why aren't these free and this and that? And I said, look, this isn't taking away from the hospitals that are trying to get these tests out there. This is an addition to, and you want. You want private organizations to get FDA tests and to sell them and put them out there because they're going to continue to help meet the demand. Because what we need to do is we don't, because when you get to the hospital, when the hospitals have them, here's what's going to happen you're going to need to get a prescription. They're going to ration them and the prescription. Well, they're also going to give them to all the people that they think already had it that are like there. That, Those are people are going to be the first in line. That's what I mean. The, 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 you're going to have to get a prescription because you're not just going to be able to show up and get tests. So if we can get more and more private companies, to make these tests, sell them for a profit so they can make more, what's going to end up happening is we get more and more and more people just, there's a lot of people who are paranoid. They want to go get tested. But it would be good to know how many like asymptomatic people well, weren't have they, antibodies. Weren't they giving you crap because yeah. it was 250 or something like that? That's They were like, oh my God, it's $250. And you were like, come on, dude, you got to understand what... what, what well, like, or, or you can wait and try to get a prescription right, and right. try to get all that stuff. But I, what, what I think the best thing that could happen is if we have widespread antibody testing, people with no symptoms, people with symptoms, everybody, because it'll give us a clear, a more clear picture of what, how much of the population's actually been infected. Because one of the big problems is all these asymptomatic people that, you know, they didn't really have any symptoms or they had a real mild cold and they don't know if they. So we don't really know how many people. And there's some speculation that. The, it was probably a much larger percentage of the population. Well, that I mean, I am, I'm super curious. I know that we off air have talked more about this than we have on air. But, you know, I in the mid in mid January, I went up to uh, the Tahoe house with uh, my childhood best friends there and there. This was in January, right? Yeah, mid January, yeah. mid January. I was up there and. They all, we all have, uh, you know, uh, newborn or not newborn, but uh, kids that are under the age of two, and wives, and and we were all up there with our families for a week, and we got sick as fuck. I mean, and th remember, these people go back all the way to childhood with me, right? And never in the entire time that we've been friends have we ever all been together like this, got this sick. And then we were so sick that the following week afterwards, we were texting each other every day to check on each other and their kids because uh, their two kids got hospitalized. Uh, all of us were running fevers. All of us had the, all the symptoms that they, everyone's talking it's about. Off. Yeah, but it wasn't even on our radar at that time because it wasn't over here and no one was talking about it. So we just thought we had the nastiest flu. When they brought their their uh, their kids in to get tested, they didn't come up with flu. They didn't have a real answer. They, that's the thing. That's the that's the thing that makes me curious because your friend's kid who had to go to the hospital, they tested them for everything. Yes, and they had negative on everything. Yes, even mm -hmm. though they had fever, terrible. I mean, yeah. and, and your your friend's baby, poor kid, who had seizures. So yeah, really yeah. bad. Yeah, and symptoms. which just recently, I think just in the last couple weeks, came out that they're starting to see that in infants, starting to see that some of the babies are having seizures from this. And they were like, I remember like us every day talking, like, what are they saying? They're like, well, they think it could be this, it might be that. It was like all this yeah. maybe shit, and we were, and all of us, all of us were talking, saying. Man, this is like one of the worst flus I have fucking. Either we, each one of us, either said it was the worst we've ever had in our life, or it was one of the worst we've ever had in a long time, mm -hmm. and that was the conversation. And then we went on for a week afterwards of communicating together. And even when I came back to work here, if you remember some of those episodes back in January, He's you can coughing all over. Yeah, everyone, and yeah. a lot of that Doug edits out, so you <laughs> like you don't hear it. But I mean, I, every like time I I had to lean over and yeah. cough and cough, it was nasty. So I'm really really curious, and of course, 
you know, when I first was saying that I think I had it at the very beginning when this started to hit, everybody laughed and said, whatever, it wasn't even in the U.S. yet. But now we're starting to speculate that there's potential that it could have been they over They speculate here. that it was probably, that it could have been here in the States as early as December or maybe even uh, late so November. And so now I'm like, so here's the thing for me, like, yeah, I could, I don't, I'm not sick right now. I could potentially wait three months until they're giving it for free and I can go see my doctor or have my insurance pay for it or what like that. Or I could support a local friend and pay for it right now and allow one, him to help his business out, and two, me find out right now if I have the antibodies. Fucking A, that's worth it and, to me. And, and encourage a company or give them enough, uh, just give them the demand so that they can create more supply. Right. We need more, we need public testing and we need private testing for people who don't want to wait in line, just want to get tested. And we I need more and more people. And I tested. know that he's reinvesting back in it because he says right now that they you have to go through the the blood draw process. Yeah. Uh, and he says like they're already pushing and working towards getting the finger prick, which would like speed up the process. I'm sure probably make it less expensive. So they're looking to even already do that, and hopefully this first dude, round goes well for them and they book out so they can actually. I'll do tell that. you. I'll tell you though, dude. If I I'm because I'm gonna go get tested too, right? If I get tested. And I don't have antibodies. I'm gonna be so, <laughs> You're gonna be so mad. Mad. What a waste. You know what I mean? <laughs> like ah, that was oh, that was this a cold. Kind of shitty flu. Damn Boo. it. That sucks. I don't I know. know. I think if I if I because you you said the same thing off air to me. Just like you know, just be prepared that you don't. So, but I don't know. I think uh, there's there's probably areas I could tighten up my game a little bit better about being even more cautious and and uh, than I already am. So if I find that out that I haven't, I think that'll be like, okay, I better be careful that uh, I, I'm not uh, immune to this right now. So I want to know no matter what, you yeah. know, so whatever the outcome, uh, it's not, it's not good or bad for me. It's just, I want to know. You yeah. Know? Well, for me, mm -hmm. if I have the antibodies, it makes me feel like I can help uh, some of the older people in my family. Cause if I have antibodies, then I'll be able to get groceries for them. I'll be able to go out and do certain things yeah. uh, without, you know, fear, you know, the fear of getting infected. Did and, you, you guys know, hear there was um, the, a few people have, have started to train dogs to actually deliver groceries. Like some, some wine companies have, you know, dogs they send out uh, to, to uh, basically go up to the door with, with the bottles of wine. And then also like there's a few like people have trained their dogs to actually deliver the, the bags with these saddles on their back what? to older people. Dude, dogs are the best. They're the, they're the Shit, right? Dogs are the best. Just yeah. don't, just don't order like buy a hot dogs or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. I would. I, you know what? I, sh I wish I would have read the article now because I saw something pop up in my feed and it made me curious. But I was distracted doing something else. Uh, that I would think that actually pets would be. A, a bad thing to be around because they're long fur and petting them. Oh yeah, I would think they could transfer it uh, as easy or easier than even humans touching things. Well, so well, far, no, wouldn't, because, you, wouldn't you think that's how that would work? No, because so far the the greatest uh, chance of con contracting this virus is by being near someone that has it. They shed the virus like right. crazy. It's, it's still possible to pick it up from a surface. But it's un, it's not nearly as as, as likely that you're okay. just out in public, yeah, you touch likely. a surface. Yeah, if you do get it from a surface, it's probably because you're in a room with someone who has it, and you're in the room for hours. But I guess cats are susceptible. Uh, as Maybe that's what I've read. Yeah, did you see the tiger? There was a tiger in yeah, the Bronx. Yeah, a tiger that got it. Bronx what? Zoo that got the yeah. that got COVID. Yeah. What? A tiger in the Bronx Zoo got it, dude. Dude. <laughs> Joe Exotic. Fuck. Didn't he get it? Carol did you, did you, hey, did yeah. you check your Snopes before you put that out there? No, it's all over the no, news. No, I, I saw that I saw that article that, too, so they got me if so. It's that bitch Carol Baskin. Yeah, she's all over this <laughs> thing, I'll bitch, tell you what. Giving all the tigers yeah, that <laughs> COVID. <laughs> uh, anyway. Hey, you, yeah. brought up, you brought up the other day uh, the Spotify or the uh, the Rockabye baby thing yeah. for, for ACDC. Yeah, yeah, dude. So after you brought that up, I got a flood of DMs of all, dude, they have everything. I know, like your favorite baby. Man, they, they have put tool. like wind chimes. They have yeah. all a tool yeah. done. I was last night, like it's hell late. I was working late last night, and all of a sudden it comes on my phone. Katrina's like, "What are you listening to?" I'm like, <laughs> "This is the most amazing thing ever." You're also, listening to like prison sex, yes, but it's uh, you know, for kids. Yes, <laughs> they have all, they have every they have every tool song done in in uh you know lullaby or whatever yeah. it's so great yeah, oh, oh my God. it's very relaxing actually even for oh, me oh yeah because it's my favorite well, band because you recognize the tune like, yes yeah and it, like i was still listening to thunderstruck just like with wind chimes and you're just sitting there reading a book like yeah it's it's very yeah it's very chill that's fucking yeah. i know hey, hey so uh do you guys see that bezos donated a hundred million dollars to food banks 
Oh, that's cool. Oh, good. Isn't that great? Yeah. $100 million. Good and, job. Yeah, and I'm sure he's going to get criticized. Of course. Like, yeah. Of course. He's got so you much got money. You got $100 billion. And you just, <laughs> Yeah, you only that's gave like a hundred. That's like a dollar. Yeah, right. Yeah. I know. But anyway, yeah, isn't that great, though? That's great. No. That's no. so good. I saw, yeah, there was there was a list of like some of the uh, top, uh, you know, like most rich people, I guess you would say, like in like donating and what they're donating right now. It's it's pretty astounding what they're donating. Yeah. Um, America is the leads the world in, in donations. Both in charity, total charity dollars, and in per capita mm-hmm. charitable dollars. So we do a damn good job of giving our, you know, in t- comparison. I think we could do better, of course, but in comparison to the rest of the world, I think we do it in per capita. So even when you're you're calculating all the amount of money, well, that we I'm make, sure if we were tax different, there would be people giving you a lot more money too, right? Oh, yeah. it's actually that's there's incentive. There, there's Help. lots that's the, of evidence on that. That's the theory, right? The theory is it's that not be- theory. There's lots. There's there's evidence every time taxes go down. You see, and people make more money as a result. You see, charitable uh, donations go up right. every single time. So it's really cool. Speaking of which, uh, Bernie Sanders dropped out. He's out. Oh, he's done. He finally gave up. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, wow. so that's big it's, news. Actually, it's, it's going to be Biden versus Trump. Dude, you know what's Dude, you know what's crazy? Really? And you brought this up the other day, and I just I guess I didn't. It didn't really dawn on me because I mean we're we're heading into you know election time. Totally, yeah. sh- totally. And everybody shout. forgot about and, it at this point. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen Biden anywhere. No, I haven't seen him anywhere. Oh, it's no. e- every single day. It is Trump talking to the nation he every is, single day. They're fucked. And the only thing that they, the other side has is let's find ways to nitpick the things that he says, which makes talks. you look terrible because you want, you know, right now it's an emergency situation, right? You're not getting any airtime. Yeah. And you know, uh, here's the other thing too. Crazy news that comes out about these politicians. It, it doesn't even make it the first page of Google. For example, People don't know this, but a woman, came, I think it was a woman, came oh, forward yeah, to talk I heard about, about about Biden. Yes, about him touching her inappropriately or something like that, right? Nobody knows. Nobody cares because we're reading about everything else that's happening. Oh, my God. But that's, that was big. That's, that would normally be big. Well, news. What is he running on? Hey, I'm friends with Obama. Yeah. Like, is, that, is that like his pitch? <laughs> Have you heard his speeches? So, so Trump says a lot of stupid shit, right? He'll say things that you're just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe he said that. Biden says shit that just doesn't make any sense. Like his brain doesn't work properly. Yeah, I, wor- <laughs> I, wor- I seriously worry. He's like, you know, like dementia is setting in. It sounds like it. It, right? it sounds like it every time he talks. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Well, we were hoping to see like a, a good old duel, but I don't think we're going to see it because of what's going on. I, I mean, that should be happening right now. Right now, there should be fire going back and forth between the two of them, but it's well, not. There is, but we yet, he's yeah. not the official nominee yet. He will be because, because you know, Sanders just dropped out. So yeah. now Biden is, I mean, he's guaranteed. Yeah, who else is yeah, up there with him? But isn't, no, nobody. It, aren't we in the aren't we in the middle of like when it really heats up like this is like when all like if you're left or right you're saving all your ammo for this time right now right isn't this when it starts or does now, it start it's going to start to ramp up because now we know for sure bernie sanders is the is the, the, the he's going to be the candidate for the so Democrats. when when do we normally see the peak of the the the, the fighting back and forth oh right? i mean of course right before yeah. you know if, you know you ever hear the word uh, the term of uh, the october surprise you ever hear that okay that's what yeah, yeah, yeah. that's because in october so all the real dirt starts getting slimy, well what right? they'll do is they'll get something really tasty yeah they hope that's the yeah. coup de gras and right? then they'll save it yeah because october's right before because what you don't see what ends up happening this is why i like politics i, I watch this shit like a total dork right mm. you'll come out with some crazy ass bad news about a candidate. But if it comes out too soon, you fuck because their approval ratings will drop, but then time will pass and then people kind of forget about it. Yeah. So you want to save your worst shit for right before <laughs> so that it sticks and that person's your mug fucked. sticks right in the yes. face. It's so sports for nerds. Oh, it's so good. It's so sports for nerds. Oh, I love exactly it. Exactly what Paul anyway, thinks. So, so uh, w- you know, one of our partners is cr- obviously crushing right now. Um, are they still on back order? I'm talking about PRX. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I know that they have, uh, I mean, it's and it's not super bad, right? You can still order stuff. Well, pull the website up, Doug, because they actually had a banner that would actually tell people as soon as you log into their the PRX website. No, I know, because, oh. man, plates right now are so valuable. Everything. Like, everybody wants them. Well, by, yeah. by the way, we just got our, our order of bands, and it, I apologize if they're gone by the time you hear this because they're moving that fast because it was hard for us to re order and get them they're sold out everywhere home gym equipment home fitness equipment is bands exploding. plates yeah. everything you could think of is crazy yeah, well so, something to consider too i mean it, no not it, our link doug their actual website yeah, yeah just even after on. all this passes i mean it's like yeah sure like reintroduce yourself to the gyms but like having a home gym makes a lot of sense mm. you know like it, it is something that you definitely want to consider well i i love working out at home always have 
I love it because it eliminates the time I need to drive to the gym, drive home. It, it allows me to, to work out, zero ego. Um, I get creative. I have fun. I can play where the fuck I want in terms of music or whatever. Mm-hmm. I shock. You know, I could do whatever I want in my own home gym. So I've always loved it. But right now, home fitness equipment and like company like PRX that makes – I mean, PRX is quality. You got a real rack. You got real weights. Yeah. Um, and they're just crushing because everybody right now is trying to order they might they, they might be doing okay now. They must because they used to have a, a red banner that went across that said that everything is uh, six weeks back. No, they still have that. Minimum of five weeks uh, for order processing, daily sales limit due to high order volume. That's not bad. Five weeks yeah. is not bad because a lot of places are sold out completely. Oh, yeah. And it w- yeah. I think it would take you two weeks anyways, right? Yeah. It took about that long for us to get all of our well, stuff. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, They're probably working around the clock right now. Some of the last places that will probably be open, I hate to say this, uh, are gyms. Uh, they, they're not considered well, essential we, at all. And and they're, they're you know the way that people view them is there's lots of people together sweating and working out. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a little bit longer than we think. Well, not only open. that, it's yeah. like what we speculated on is that even if they do open, I doubt people are going to come rushing back in. That's, that's one of the, I mean, personally, even that's one of the, the last places that I'm going to find the need to like, I got to get back into like you, right. there's so many other things with work and stores and your, your daily life, things that you like to do yeah. that restaurants that you eat at. I mean, I'm going to do all those things probably before I go into a gym. That's got a bunch of people in sweating and you know touching how crazy everything. people are going to get. If you don't wipe the uh, machine finally. off after you're done, yeah, <laughs> they're going to be like Nazis. About all it. you well, disgusting you, well, people. You you know what? And you know, this to those that are gym owners out there, those that are thinking about that, the ones that put in new policies. If or you make go, people feel safe. Right. Go above and beyond. Yep. Like if, if, let's, let's, do let's it. put it this way. Like here, uh, we don't do this anymore, but if I was running a gym, I would budget and staff, even if it's a minimum wage employee, that literally the entire time they open, their only job is to be walking around and wiping machines so people see that. 100%. Dude, like, here's, that's, that's and, worth it. And you know what? You, know what, you want to know what's funny though about this? I haven't heard because you read about cases where there were like super, what do they call them, like super spreaders of the virus and whatever. I haven't heard of uh, uh, g- gyms being a major place of spreading the virus. So, and I'm not well, saying that that can't happen. Right. You're in close quarters, you're sweating, whatever. But uh, they may all just be carriers. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I mean, you got healthy people in there. Um, you know, for the I, most part. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, so, you know what I was thinking about it is. Uh, remember how there was like this this trend for a while where people would come in with like garden gloves and like just gloves oh, yeah, in yeah. general like dude gloves are coming back <laughs> you know like like not the cut off ones with with the fingers hanging out in the web yeah. no it's it's like real gloves i guarantee there's gonna be gloved workouts that's like actually crazy. a really good point yeah. yeah we should we should get in on that i have the cut off finger that's one. actually yeah. a really good point that's, that's gonna i bet run. you that will be popular like, like, like the cool sticky glove you know well yeah, there's, whatever there's theories around that we're we're gonna have the mask now that people are gonna still uh, continue to do do that for a while. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. If you're, can uh, we make one fashionable? I mean, why not? Yeah. Have an Adam's uh, face. I want on a predator it. one. I don't know. If everybody fat. could. Look, I the mandibles, dude. I'm not you know, sure that's wow. fashionable. Everybody could look like Adam. No, you know, you sell, <laughs> very cool. You sell millions of those. Did you see how cool I was in fifth grade, Good though. Oh, that? you know. Good huh? picture. Uh, of you yeah, you had grade. quite the grill on bro, you back then. Bro. I told you. Yeah. I told you. Made your grill. I didn't look believe nice. you. I was like, what? Yeah, you thought you thought I was exaggerating. Did you eat sideways or what, bro? I had the I had nothing them, but pasta I, slurping it in. I had them teeth till twenty years old, man. Till mm. twenty years old, I was rocking them crooked ass teeth like that. It was yeah. messed yeah. up. You're still a cute kid, D- man. Diversity, bro. I'd, I'd still squeeze your little Hard teeth with my mouth closed. I, yeah. I but I, for a long, I remember remember talking to Justin about this, and I know you remember Adversity. this. It's completely oh, changed, but just five years ago, the way Justin smiles and laughs is different than how he is now. Yeah, yeah, it is. It trained it's, you. Especially when it's from young, when you're younger and insecure, yeah. of course, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, I mean, I had a crooked, closed mouth smile like all the way until twenties. It wasn't until yep. I got my teeth fixed, and then even then, I had to like kind of train myself, like go ahead and show your teeth because your teeth are all straight now. Yeah, like, I'm mm-hmm. like a lot nicer now. Yeah, like, you smile more. Uh, yeah, more. I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, always <laughs> like the mean mug, you know, constantly smile. like resting bitch face. Dude, no, like, the constant. best the best thing is Justin when he takes pictures, he does the. 
the double chicken. <laughs> yeah, I think I've, I've been trying to eliminate that though. Now, like I, I go like ah, like like more like big open teeth you're, action you're versus like, like whoa, <laughs> you know, like job of the hut looking fucking. You know, it's like you never learned how to pose for a picture. You're, you're I never re- did, dude. Is there like a class you guys got to? Like you got the angles, you got lights, like all this bullshit. Like, well, I don't know, know, when, any of this when you have kids, I'm sure you know this. When you have kids and they do the school pictures, especially in the younger grades, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, <laughs> kids don't know how to pose yeah. they don't know how to smile like for, for a, they well, do a my, fake my smile this is terrible yeah so my after me so my son's like mm, yeah you know? and my daughter does this like eh, you know i'm like that's not how you normally smile <laughs> so I, the way i teach my kids is i said i think of something funny before they take the picture and then laugh so my daughter's oh, like yeah. i think of farts I'm like, all right, that's, my, <laughs> it's your that's perfect that's my little girl yeah first question is from josh core is there a rule of thumb one should stick by when programming their own workouts? Yes. Josh Core. There's a lot of, uh, of rules of thumb, but I think the, the number one rule of thumb, probably the best possible thing you could do when you're programming your own workout is the same thing that a trainer would absolutely have to do before training a client. Learn how to do a self-assessment. Mm, this yep. makes a huge difference in how you train yourself. That's so, the foundation right there. Right, off of. right. So, you know, some basic ways to do it. Like you could take a, have some take a picture of your posture standing sideways. This isn't perfect, but it's one simple, easy one. And you look at your posture, like, man, my shoulders really round forward. Okay, now you know because your shoulders round forward, I'm going to try and insert exercises that focus on bringing my shoulders back. That's just a simple example. Or if you try to do a squat and you notice your hips aren't activating – Maybe insert exercises that help you fire and activate your glutes. Now, if you really want to go the extra mile and get very individualized without hiring a trainer, because trainers can be expensive, um, Maps Prime has this self-assessment tool. There's three movements, and you kind of feel. Now, why is it is an assessment so important? It literally tells you what exercises to focus on, and which which ones. You shouldn't do. So back to the forward shoulder. You got somebody with really bad forward shoulder. Time to work out their back. You know what exercise I'm not, I'm not going to do? Lat pull downs. Not going to do lots of lat pull downs because that's going to, many times, encourage that forward shoulder. It's going to encourage their, their bad posture. And the worst thing you can do is get really strong at moving bad. So mm-hmm. if, you don't, if, you, if you don't figure it out and you just go throw exercises at yourself, you may actually make – certain things worse. Now, besides injuries and pain and all that stuff, it just slows down your progress. It just doesn't make you uh, progress as fast. I had no idea you were going to go that direction because, you know, when you think of a question like this, the the typical thing is talking about periodization and talking about order of exercise. and and, Those uh, are important too. No, 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 they are. But I'm actually really glad you went that way because that wasn't on my mind. But um, it's true that... You know, it's one thing to be going to the gym and all you're focused on is losing body fat or building muscle. But the the truth is every client that all of us train, that that was that was part of their goal. Their my main focus always was to address, you know, chronic pain and and posture first or while I was heading towards their goal. And when you do a good assessment and you and you find out uh, what's going on with your body? Why are you not able to squat all the way to the ground? Why are you not able to get your hands back against the wall? I just did something on my story the other day. You can see me struggling with it, and and I, and I show that too. I love when people DM me too and like point out like all the shit. Like, <laughs> oh, you're not doing this very well. I'm like, yeah, no shit, bro. It's, yeah. I'm sharing That's why I'm it, working on it, right? Yeah. Exactly. I'm sharing it so people know that even somebody who's a trainer who's been doing this long, it's not like something that. You know, you do one time, or that I'm I'm immune to it. Like I, I like it's an area. I'm on my phone all day. I sit more than I've ever sat in my life this last five years, and so it's something that I I constantly have to work on. And it, it's a priority. It's the first priority before I get into the lift. Like yeah, the bench press part's fun, and I love to to lift heavy and and get stronger and build muscle. But before that, you know, it's me spending ten minutes uh, addressing all the things that I need to to work on. And to me. Uh, the most valuable thing I think trainers can give to clients is this now, and you don't need to be a trainer to to understand this. This was this was a lot of the motivation behind Prime was yes, it was a tool that we thought about trainers when we when we created it. Like every trainer should have this in their arsenal, especially if they're an online coach. But we really wanted to simplify it enough 
that like our my mom could pick it up, could read through it, watch the videos, and understand the things that she should be doing to help her body out before she goes into a, a basic workout. And so that was the idea of this program. And if there is it, and I love that you went this way, Sal, because it wasn't where I was thinking at all. It's true. Like this should be the place that you start and at the bare minimum be doing that. And then the next rule of thumb for me is working on the big lifts, right? And getting good at them and understanding that if you're not good at them, which is very common, it's common that you don't have a good deadlift, you don't have a good squat, you don't have good. And the reason why that is, is for why you do the assessment and you work on those things, because mm -hmm. most people don't move on a squat or a deadlift or an overhead press or a bench press well because they have dysfunction because they're not good they're not they don't have favorable movement patterns that mm -hmm. they need to work on so that's why what sal said is the first rule then what the next thing is use those four core lifts and and look at it like you're trying to get good at the skill of it yeah. and practice getting good and then when you're not good or you feel weird things when you're bench pressing it doesn't feel right or you notice when you squat things break down the knees come in or you can't get very deep instead of just saying i'm a bad squatter i'm going to give up i'm not do it try and dive deeper into your own body and learn why yeah, that is uh, i mean to reiterate you know basically what, what both of you have said it's it, like for me it's it, the rule is really you know, the assessment part of it is is understanding how the body is properly functioning or it's not, you know, are all the joints able to do what they're supposed to do without, you know, pain and restriction. And, you know, and then it's, it's, it's a matter of if not in certain things, then, you know, I'm not going to load that movement. And so there, there's just standards like that where, you know, I'm, I'm going unloaded with, with clients in terms of like doing a squat, for instance, you know, until uh, we get enough stability support to then like gradually add load. But definitely treating uh, the major lifts like a skill is a very important thing to then, you know, aspire to, you know, get your get your programming towards, you know, uh, something that's like like a very admirable uh, squat, you know, bench press overhead lift, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So. By the way, do you guys know where the term "rule of thumb" came from? Uh, yeah, I remember this. Th this was on um, that movie with the uh, Boondock Saints. Where... Oh, did they talk about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, this, this big lady was beating this guy up about it. Apparently, it was uh, th there were laws in certain areas where you could only hit your wife, you could hit with your a, partner with a stick, with a stick that was as big, like as big as your, big thumb. As your thumb. That was the biggest. Yeah. So they they were trying to control the. Right. <laughs> they were, the what? beatings. Yeah, I did so, not know that. So they call it the rule of thumb. Like you could hit your wife with a stick, but it couldn't be bigger. <laughs> very PC. Yeah, yeah than very, the thumb. Very, very anyway, that's. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've read. Maybe it's a myth. I'm, I'm sure people will correct me if it is. Here's another good uh, rule of thumb, right? Um, and I'm, I'm gonna put it very, very plainly: practice exercises often, train them less often. Yeah. So, okay. So what I mean by that is, rather than going into your squat session and thinking you're gonna hammer your legs. More often, what you should do is go into your squat sh session thinking, I'm going to get good at squats and practice yes. them. Totally different mentality, and it dictate it actually directs your workout in ways that are more beneficial. And, well, and let's explain what that kind of looks like. So let's take, for example, you, you've you gone through like the, the squat assessment on uh, MAPS Prime, and there's certain movements on there that we teach to help improve, you know, if you have a, a quote-unquote broken squat. So you know what those movements are. It might be 90-90 stuff. It might be combat stretch. When you're going in to practice a squat, sometimes this is what it looks like for me. I do all those priming movements that I'm supposed to do before I get into a squat. Then I go do a set, and it's a light set. It's not supposed to be really heavy. I want some load on the bar because I want to feel the weight. I also feel like when you, especially with squatting. Well, you got to practice with something. Right, right. right. It, it, sometimes it helps to get into the movement better even to have some weight than just your body weight. So loading the bar somewhat, but not like like less than 50% intensity on it. And then I I do the movement and I, 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 I'm watching myself in the mirror or maybe I even use my phone to record myself. I look at it and I pay attention to what, look. oh wow, I, you know, I look like I'm getting a little bit more travel in my knees from my combat, so that's great. But oh man, I feel like my knees are caving in. So then I go back, I sit down, I do some more priming movements, then I go back to another set of squats. Then I look and assess again, then I go back and do some more priming. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to get better connected, work on my movement patterns, and then go, and you know, I'm teetering back and forth between these priming movements 
and the squat because my goal isn't how much weight can I throw in the bar or how strong can or I how get. how much can I hammer my legs. Right, or, or how sore can I get. It's mm -hmm. I want to get better at this movement. Right, so it's the difference between like if you're learning how to swim and you're, you're practicing how to swim well, mm -hmm. it's the difference between practicing swimming and just going as fast as you can yeah. in a meet, okay? Uh, that's the difference. So you're going to approach your, your exercises – as practice, more often than not, and every once in a while when you feel comfortable and form is good, you can push it and train yourself. It's a really, really good rule of thumb for most people. And by the way, practicing exercise, especially if you do it frequently. So if I practice squats three days a week, I'm going to build muscle and I'm going to get stronger. The frequency of, of practice is what really sends uh, that muscle building signal. So two other things I really consider while you know being in a program or programming for other clients is you know how long have they been in you know uh, like one plane of motion and 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 how can I incorporate more planes of motion uh, so it actually expresses uh, those specific movements that the joint needs to uh, go through in order to remain healthy, remain a part of the stability process. And so like I'm always looking through and like kind of scanning it. Have they been, uh, you know, equally loaded uh, too long? Like, should we should we do some unilateral training? Uh, should we do some more rotational movement? Uh, should we go left to right? Uh, all these things are, are you should consider because the body is capable of those things and we should train them. Right. So, in other words, train. Like, if you're always doing squats with two legs and that's what you've been doing for a while, try some single leg uh, exercises or try something where you move to the side. Right. Like a lateral lunge versus a – look, If it, it, here's the other thing you can do. Uh, obviously, part, one of the easiest ways to do this is, like, you know, get the program, Maps Prime, follow the assessment. But we also have a YouTube channel with a bunch of free – videos and stuff on there. Another thing you can do if you want to do the if you want to just use all of our free information is when you do your self assessment, one thing you could do is say what parts of my body tend to bother me. Go on our video library and see if you can find something. So, uh, you know, my my hips tend to bother me or my squat doesn't feel good. Go on the YouTube channel Mind Pump TV and just search like squat mobility movements or shoulder mobility movements because my shoulders bother me or my back or whatever. You'll find free videos and those movements uh, more often than not will benefit you and get you better at doing your traditional exercises. Next question is from Rabri. How quickly will you lose muscle mass when no longer working out with heavy weights? Can you maintain or build muscle when you only have bands, 10 to 30 pound dumbbells, and a suspension trainer? This, yes. This depends. So yes. It, it, it really does depend on, uh, on the person. Depends on the programming, if too. You're, yeah, if you're, first off, you have to have a good workout. So if you have a crappy workout, I don't care if you use heavyweights, lightweights, bands, body weight, it's not going to work very well. So that's number one. Yeah, if you're following what all the Instagram influencers are doing right now with all these weird- <laughs> Good fucking life. Yeah, yeah. jumping exercises and lifting couches and doing things with your chair. Just If you're doing ridiculous stuff just to get a sweat like you're losing muscle it's you are it's coming you are but <laughs> let's say you always train with heavy weight let's say you've been doing it for years this is what you do and now you're forced to be more creative you have the light dumbbells you have bands you have body weight sometimes a change just the change with good programming actually produces yeah. better results you know what i for years i trained super super heavy weight all the time because that's what was supposed to build the most muscle when I switched to lightweight and higher reps, I actually built more muscle. Mm -hmm. And this, this has happened time and time again. Just because it's for novel. It right. and, and honestly, somebody who lifts heavy weights all the time and like trains more, more like a power lifter and is now forced to do body weight, TRX, or bands, and all of those things are things that are completely foreign to them normally, mm -hmm. has a really good chance of actually building muscle. And even if you lose a little bit of strength, right? That, that And that, that wouldn't be weird. It wouldn't be weird to not be heavy squatting and not be heavy. Because don't forget, there's the skill part of the of, of, of the movement, too, that, that is required there and that you lose because you're not doing it as much anymore. So you might see a slight step back when you get back in the gym, let's say, three months from now. But And I think Sal addressed this the other day. But how quick you'll gain that back and then the likelihood that you'll progress beyond that because you've trained your body with this novel stimulus over the course of this one or two months that we're out. That's right. You could see huge benefits. That's right. Well, and I think too, and I bring up programming because I think a lot of people look at this as like an accessory lift stuff, right? Like they, this is like novel, it's cool, it's cute, but there's a way to really progress. And, uh, you know, like gymnasts do a fantastic job of this. I remember like for a whole year, I was like training with just body weight and trying, you know, my best 
to take an exercise and then uh, intensify it somehow, whether I'm adding gravitational forces by, you know, increasing demand through the angles or, you know, I'm holding in specific poses and I'm like adding intensity to the isometric portion. Uh, you know, my, I'm using bands. I'm using a really heavier band, you know, load for that. Uh, there, there's ways to progress in, in, in thinking in those uh, in, in that direction will, will help you to not only just like preserve your muscles, but also gain muscle. That's right. It. Now, let's say you do lose a little bit of muscle because you change the stimulus and it's just not as loud or not as effective as the previous workout. Okay. You're not going to lose a ton of muscle and whatever you lose comes back very, very quickly. It's called muscle memory and it comes back really, really fast. But if you're smart and you, and you have good workout programming at home and you're getting creative and you're addressing all the issues that you tend to neglect... Here's what will probably happen when you go back to the gym. Maybe you do lose a little bit of muscle, but you've gained mobility, you've gained control, you've gained stability, maybe even gained a little bit of endurance. Maybe you're not used to doing higher reps and slower reps and that kind of stuff. You go back to the gym, go back to your traditional lifting, take your time, don't just jump right into it. The muscle, ba muscle mass that you lost comes back in a hurry, and then you go past your old uh, plateau. You go past your old limits because now you're heading into them with new skills, new ways of supporting your body and better mobility. This, I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? For a lot of you gym fanatics that get stuck in the same kind of training, this, and you, and, and you now you're, you're changing your routine dramatically because you're forced to. One of the best possible things that could happen to you, as much as it's, it sucks, maybe you're resisting it. If you're consistent, you got good workout programming, mark my words, when you're finally able to go back to the gym, you will look back at this and say, that actually was a good thing that happened for my body because now I'm surpassing all the limits I had before. And sometimes we need to be forced. Sometimes, look, for I know for me, uh, injuries and pain in the past have forced me to change my workout program. And then when I come out of them and I do everything right, I always look back and be like, you know, that was actually a, a good thing. My stability's better. I break my old, I hit my old PR and I'm, I'm above it 10 pounds because I was focusing on all these things that I was ignoring before. Next question is from Steve Morrison 416. I'm coming into week four of Maps Anywhere and have been enjoying the change from performance. I'm now hearing that we may be having to social distance for another 12 weeks. Since Anywhere is four weeks, what would be the best way to progress? Should I run it another two times or extend the phases? Okay, great question. Yeah. So first off, Maps Anywhere is our, is our equipment free workout program. All you need are bands and a broomstick. Um, and then you do the workouts. And by the way, we've extended uh, the 50% off sale on it. Just use the code uh, white and then the number 50 without a space. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, Maps Anywhere comes with uh, the ability to scale and progress it over and over and over again. Uh, one of the ways to do this is through what are called the AMP sessions. Increase the amount of sets, reps, or pick more difficult movements within there. So the my recommendation, just like I would recommend with anybody else who followed any other program, once you've gone through it, look at the program, modify it, and run it again. Mm -hmm. And then go through the program and then modify it and run it again. If you do that, you're going to continue to progress each time. And this is true for any program. There's also another way that you can progress it that I've recommended to some people too, which is that there we've been talking a lot about on this show about the benefits of breaking up a workout you know, in 20 minute workouts throughout the day. Now the maps anywhere program is about a 40 minute workout. I'd say is what it takes to get through that. So I would actually do that twice in a day. So I would actually go twice in a day, or you could break it up three times and split the workout up. So you can increase volume by just doing that the second time around. Now I don't recommend that the first time. I think the first time like we do with most of all of our programs, we tell people to just as it's written. Yeah, follow the programming as it is because we always take into account the the idea that you may want to scale it up or that you have different levels of fitness that are entering this. So follow it the way it's programmed, and then one one option to scale up or increase intensity is what Sal is saying is choose exercises because we have exercises one, two, and three in levels. Like and level three is more difficult than level one, and we give you the flexibility to build your these amp sessions. By choosing those exercises, I recommend when you're first going through it, you're choosing most of your exercises from level one, you know, get and get good at them. And then when you go through a second time, pick more of them through level two. If you go through a third time, pick level three. That's what Sal's talking about with the AMP sessions. You can also 
build more volume in. Uh, because their body weight movements, because they're shorter workouts, you can do two 40-minute workouts in the day, or you could cut the workout in half and then do it three times in, throughout the day too. So there's a lot of different ways that you can scale the volume up after you've been through it one time and, and then come back and, the, around and this recommendation is true for again any pro i don't care if you follow our program or any of the program if it's a good workout and you want to go through it again just look at it and okay this is what i did for the last six weeks uh what are some new exercises i can add or this movement here kind of bothered me i'm going to add this or i'm going to add another set to every exercise to get me to do more volume. This is true uh, advice for any kind of workout that you follow. Maps Anywhere also include, we don't talk about it very often, but we included a uh, suspension trainer suspension mod. trainer mod inside it too. So that's another way that- So if you, you have can, a suspension trainer, you right, can follow that. Right, and yeah. you can find those relatively cheap. I mean, I know the name brand ones can are a bit expensive, but they have knockoff brands that- are, are relatively inexpensive, and I don't I don't think they're sold out like a lot of bands are. Yeah. And you could do a lot of cool stuff. I mean, there's a whole library of of movements that we created in that in that. Oh, there's mod. a ton. I mean, even like Olympic rings, those are another option with, for, that gives you the same exact kind of result. But the, like, you can really get uh, some intense exercises out of that. Even just doing dips on that is a whole another level of stability for the shoulders and strength uh, to perform. And so, I mean, there's there's ways to really like add intensity and like difficulty uh to what we already presented uh so and if you have any more like you need you're in need of some ideas make sure and dm us or like you know get on the forum and, and there's plenty of people that got some more like additions to that you can add next question is from sean bailey math what accessory exercises do you recommend for building the deadlift one of my favorite ways to get stronger, and there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, increase your deadlift if you're stuck, but one of my favorite ways to, to, to get my deadlift to go up is to use uh, some form of progressive resistance. So this can come in the form of chains, or it can come in the form of resistance band. So uh, a resistance band would be attached to the barbell, either, either under my feet or uh, under a you know a rack or something that's going to anchor it, mm -hmm. and what ends up happening is as I lift the weight off the floor, you know as bands get stretched, the resistance gets harder and harder as you stretch them out, just like a rubber band, right? So at the bottom of the rep, when I'm my weakest, the weight isn't there isn't that much more weight from the band, but as I lift the weight and as I tend to get stronger in my lift anyway, it adds more resistance. So what it's doing is it's adding resistance as I get stronger because when you're doing a lift. Some parts of the lift are easier than others. So it's a great way to overload the areas that you're stronger and not overload the areas that you're weaker. A chain does the same thing. If I put a chain around the bar, let it sit on the floor. As I pick up the bar, the links come up off the floor and the bar gets heavier and heavier. And this method of progressive resistance mm. uh, is super effective. Studies are pretty clear on this. Strength gains are faster. It's great for breaking through plateaus. And it's also great... Uh, for building muscle. So that's one of the easy, yeah. simple ways I, I, I would love say. doing that. And I also, uh, I love doing deficit deadlifts, like, uh, you know, and, and just adding a platform and standing on it, get, uh, you know, address certain parts of the lift that you, you struggle with the most. That's one of them that, you know, you can lighten up the load, but then really, uh, you know, gain more access in, in, in recruitment where you need it more. And so that's one way to work on that. And then you can also add the chains like, like Sal Saint or bands to, you know, intensify that even more. Uh, and then just having a different stance, you know, trying, you know, the sumo stance uh, and working on that to, you know, reinforce the hips and everything else, uh, you know, involved in the lift even more. You said uh, deficit deads. Here's an easy way to do this uh, at home. So tip, traditionally what guys will do is they'll, they'll stand on something so that now they have to bend down to get deeper to lift the deadlift. That's why it's called a, a deficit. So rather than pulling it off the floor and your feet on the floor. Just do smaller now plates. You're, yeah, just those smaller plates. So That's true. Tra the 25s. The traditional the height that people deadlift is the height of the circumference of a 45-pound plate. Mm -hmm. Some people who can't deadlift the 45-pound plate will get lighter plates, but they're the same circumference. So it's that that's the traditional height. Put you know 35s or 25s on the bar. Now you rather than having to stand on something, you just have to get down lower. But I will say this: if you do a deficit deadlift, you better make you, sure you brace your core yes. and go light. You're very susceptible if your lower back. So be totally, conscious of totally. That. So I have one that uh, did wonders for my deadlift, and I love to teach this. And that is barefoot single leg deadlifts. 
Uh, you can go on my Instagram and look back. I know I've got at least two videos in the last year that mm -hmm. I've posted of me doing this. Um, I love this too in a time right now because it doesn't, most people will have to start with really light dumbbells the first time because just balancing on one leg and getting down to the ground to pick up dumbbells is extremely challenging for a lot of people. So you have to start really, really light. Um, and then, so it gives you lots of room to progress and man, if you can get to a point where you can do that with, you know, 50, 60, 90 or a hundred pound dumbbells, uh, and you can do that balancing barefoot, uh, on one leg and do a, a single leg deadlift, watch what happens when you go back to traditional deadlifts. Uh, the, just the, the grounding of that, the stability, the hip stability that you get from that, the ankle stability that you get from that the unilateral training strength that you're going to get, and then you go back to bilateral, both feet on the ground, a tr traditional deadlift. Man, I I never felt so connected and grounded to my deadlift than when I actually took a break from deadlifting and I tried to progress my single leg uh, deadlift. That was incredible. And you know what? That's a great one mm -hmm. for right now because- Right, that's if, why I thought of yeah, that. Yeah, because totally. if, if people are at home, you don't need a lot of weight to do a single leg deadlift. In fact, for most, you know, beginner to intermediate lifters, no weight. Uh, you just you just bend over, you know, keep good form, yeah. touch the floor with your toes, and then stand up. And you can get creative with this. I, we had somebody in our um, in our forum that, or not our forum, I think on on Instagram that tagged us that was using jugs of water. Like, you know, so maybe you don't have a set of dumbbells that goes all the way up to whatever, but you can use the one gallon jugs, then you can use like five, progress up to eventually getting five gallon jugs. Man, you do that and get good at that and doing single leg deadlift. Boy, I'll tell you right now, watch what happens. Dude, most people need no, no weight, I'll right. be honest. I, no. I'll, I'll take people and I'll have yeah. them do it with, and they're just, they're all falling. All over the place. Yeah, it's no weight. Start with that. Watch what happens. But yeah, it's a great, that's a yeah, great exercise for right now. And make sure too, like you, you just notice little things like your your heel kind of turning in and any rotation that's involved in that yeah. try and stays. So we have some YouTubes on that to make sure that you're doing the form correctly, but definitely give those a yeah. shot. Now, look, before I sign off, uh, I want to give a special uh, shout out to our friend, uh, Dr. Jolene Brighton. She's been on our yes. show a couple times. We absolutely love her. Um, first time we met her, we loved her. She's got great information, um, great Instagram page. You know, she she focuses on women's health. Wrote some really good books on the birth control yeah, she's pill. She's going and, through it right now. And um, she's got uh, you know she's got the coronavirus. Um, she was at the hospital. They gave her some oxygen therapy. They're sending her home with an oxygen tank as of the recording of this podcast. Um, and you know she's a big believer in uh, collective consciousness and in, 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 in their studies to show that when people pray or wish somebody to be better, um, that they, they tend to get better. Can't explain it. Um, but she's, because she's a believer in it. Uh, and if you're a religious person, uh, you know, send, say a prayer for Dr. Jolene Brighton, mm -hmm. let her know you're hoping that she gets better. If you're not religious, send her good vibes. Um, we hope you get better soon. Um, we hope you beat this and you're okay. And, um, and, and that's that. And, and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free guides and resources. We got a lot of books there and guides that are totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. And you can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam.